Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video, it's about a gadget card. So it mounts flat, but it displays really dimensionally. So I do a step-by-step -step for the first one, and then we talk about different variations. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder, and we'll get started. So I just want to begin with this video by looking at what a pull-down pop-up is. Kind of an unassuming card when you first receive it. So let's pull it down. We can see something popping up and that's the way it opens and displays. So started with some umbrellas and rain and grew some tulips. Anyway, this is what we're going to do. It looks complicated, but it comes together pretty quickly for something with such a reveal. Anyway, I will be back with some blank cardstock and paper. And we're going to make this card. Now in the structure for this first project, you're going to need, the finished size is four and a half by six, and so it's a landscape. And so you're going to need a base piece that's 11 by six inches, and that's double your height, which is four and a half, times two is nine, and then you want two inches for the fold under. And that will become clearer as we start putting this together. The other piece you're going to need is your pop-up panel. And in this case, it needs to be approximately three inches wide. So I've got this tag that's three inches wide, needs to cover the height of your card. In this case it's going to be four and a half inches. So this is more than enough and I can cut this when we get to that point. Now the score lines first off are going to be one inch on each side and again that's going to kind of be the fold under. So you want to score it one inch from one end and then one inch from the other. And I'm just using this outside measure to do that. So that's your fold under. Now the center point is going to be at five and a half inches. Now the center in this card structure has to be cut and scored. Let me move this into the center a little bit. And so I know my score, my paper trimmer doesn't like to cut into a score line. So I want to cut first. And I want to give myself an extra half inch, which means that I've got a quarter inch on both sides for my uh, pop-up panel to slide through. And so I can go from one and a quarter, so I'm going to set my blade at one and a quarter, and I can go to four and three quarters. And that's going to give me my cut line. I want to pick that up, get that out of the way, and then give myself my center score. Okay, so now you've got your base structure. So I've got the slit in here for the pop-up to come through. And then these ends are going to get folded down and then meet back together. And that's what's going to hold the pop-up. And so when this squats down, what we need to do now is go ahead and make the pull-down portion. But before I cut into the front of my card, what I want to do is go ahead and panel it. Because I've got to have the whole front, so I've got a piece of pattern paper. And I cut it one eighth short on all sides. And so what I've got is four and three eighths tall by five and seven eighths. And that's going to get put on here. And then we're going to go ahead and make these cut lines. So I'm going to use a glue stick because I'm really not at this point sure where that's going to be. I want to make sure everything's really flat on there. So let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, once I've got that front on, I'm ready to make my cut lines for my pull down. And I did this ahead of time because I like to be directly over it. Now first thing I did is go ahead and fold it in half because I want to cut through both layers of my card front at one time. What you want to do is set this up at one inch. And what I want is a one inch frame three on three sides. So I'm going to set this up at one inch. I know I want to come in one inch from both ends. So again, I'm going to, this is six inches wide. So I'm going to put this down and cut from five to one. And that's going to make my top cut line. Then I want to flip it. And again, I want to set up my, the edge of my card at one inch. And I want to come two inches from the bottom. So that's going to go from one inch to, it looks like, two inches from the bottom is going to be two and a half. So it is a small cut line. It's not that, it's one and, one and a half inches actually as it works out. I'm going to flip to the other side and do my third cut. And so this is going to finish my flap. Again, I want to come one and a half which is two inches from the bottom of my card. Remember this is a fold under so that's not the bottom of your card. And so that's going to make this flat. Now before you open it up, the last thing you want to do is go ahead and make these two side scores. 
So I'm going to set it up two and a half. You can tell it's, it, it's at the edge of your cut line or the bottom of your cut line. And so it should be one inch on one side and then one inch on the other. And so let's see how the back is going to turn out. You just barely see that. So you've got that. So now actually you're ready for embellishments. There are some rules about how you go ahead and embellish that. But go ahead and give this a good score. So that's going to come like this. This one's going to give a good score that way. Oop, probably need that. Make sure that's, go ahead and make sure that's perpendicular because that's, that's really a light score line. And then these are going to ultimately meet in the middle. But now we're going, going to go ahead and decorate the front. So let me prep some embellishments. I've got an umbrella and some clouds. And we'll talk about um, adding embellishments to this card front. Then we'll start working on the pop-up portion. So I went ahead and attached my embellishments. In this case, they're all die cuts. And the only thing you want to keep in mind, well, there's a couple. There's two areas. There's the pull down, which is all going to disappear when the card is opened. And then there's the frame, which is going to show when the card is displayed. Now, you can go ahead and extend beyond each of these two areas. You just don't want to attach things to both the frame and the pull down and vice versa. The other thing I'd suggest, notice that some of these clouds are dipping into this and that's because you want to make it pretty obvious when someone gets it that this needs to somehow open. It kind of wants to open and we'll see that when the card is finished but that's the way you want to prep that. So now we're ready to put in the pop-up. So I want to open this up. Oh, the other thing, if you're going to edge the bottom, and this is that fold under piece, go ahead and do that. So whether you're using a punch or a cutting die, or I just freehand cut a little wave on the bottom of my card. So you want to open it up. Go ahead and have your glue ready. In this case, I put a little piece of adhesive, and all I'm doing is centering on this here. So remember that your pull-up, in this case, is going to be three inches wide. So again, the slit in the top of my card is about three and a half, give or take. Just enough room to move back and forth. Go ahead and decorate it. Now when you decorate it, you want everything really flat in both directions. So um, either a glue stick or use some double-sided tape behind the die cuts would have worked nicely. But you don't want anything catching either going up or going down. So, both ways. So this is nice and smooth even though it does have some dimension. So now what I've done is I put a little piece of double sided sticky and that's just to show you where I go ahead and put the glue. It's not really going to matter all that much. Again, I'm going to center around six inches. Let me peel this off. And so I want this centered also. I already know the height is going to be right. I'm just going to lift it up just like an eighth of an inch. So that's going to set it. Let me take a photo. Okay, so now I know this whole edge is going to cover all across here. So you want to be generous with whatever adhesive you're using because you really don't want this to fall apart. And we know since we cut them together that this is exactly going to overlap. Go ahead and tuck this top, top flap under and have it meet. And in case of liquid glue, I'm just going to hold that for a bit and let that set. Okay, once we're at this point, we are just about finished. So just make sure that you can slide this back and forth if you need to add additional adhesive do. Now, there's something to keep in mind. Um, even though this tag is four and a half inches, there is only about a section here, two and a half inches that will show through unless you kind of look down and in there. So just keep that in mind when you're decorating. Same thing with this panel. So now you've got this panel. Now I'm assuming when it's displayed it's going to have to be displayed open like this. I've just got some um, adhesive tape. Actually it's a tape pen that I've got on there and so I'm just going to attach it like so. And this you want to go ahead and stay inside your panel. And 
you've got something like this. Now there really isn't a place on here to write anything, but you've got this whole backside. So, actually that's a good point. You want to kind of make sure your backside is working for you. I did finish the envelope. Let me talk about some of these materials real quick. So I've got several um, cutting dies. These are umbrella weather framelits from Stamping Up. I've got the clouds from there and also up and away another cloud shape. And then on the inside these are tattered lace. This is called Blissful Blooms. So I'm using the tulips and the greenery from that. I got a small stamp from Paper Wishes here and that is uh, Rain or Shine I think is what it's called. And the pattern paper also comes from Paper Wishes. So all the patterns you're seeing here and this is Picket Fence Collection. And then my inks and cardstock are all from Stamping Up. So several colors. Now there are a couple things that I'm not really keen on and I call them opportunities and the first is the fact that when I put this panel on I've kinda of got this score line that's getting kinda of boogered up and so let me just show you another card it's exactly the same size and put together exactly the same way so when I cut my base and I cut the frame out I didn't have any paper on it and this is really just a strip of paper I've got two strips on the side that go up to the fold line and then my top strip and then this piece is sort of independent and this is Roses in Harmony from Paper Wishes also and I've got this little tag in here to kind of indicate that this needs to be kind of picked up on the inside this time I've used roses this actually comes from a different tattered lace die set called Rainbow Floral Bouquet and that includes the roses so I've got that all done and another thing I'm noticing is that I've got this area in here that I can make use of. So let's take a look at another one. I'm going to change up the size a little bit and we'll keep on going. So for this project I decided to make it wider and the reason I'm making it wider remember is I want to use the space on the inside once it pulls down so I'm willing to put birthday a little pennant here and so that is just going to do it now if I have things peeking out the side that works also because remember I want it to be pretty obvious that this flap needs to come down so when you construct it pretty much construct it exactly the same way only my card width is wider so in this case I've got a seven inch card width so my beginning card stock is 7 by 11. Again, I'm creasing one inch on both ends. I'm cutting my one inch frame. I cut it a little deep here, but I'm not going to worry about that because I am going to cover this panel. And so I'm hoping that will kind of hold that together. If not, I can do something else on the inside. Anyway, so I've got it decorated. Um, the other thing is I want to talk about the cardstock a little bit. You don't want too heavy a cardstock. This is some topsy-turvy and it's great because it's one color on the outside and another color on the inside. But notice on those first two cards I used double-sided colored cardstock because remember you've got the outside and the inside that's going to show up on your finished piece. So let me go ahead and decorate this and then I'll be back. So I finished decorating the front and inside. Actually finished the card. Uh, no big reveal here because you've seen it in the title photos and the thumbnails. But a lot of texture. I think these gadget cards work really well for children. And so does textures and things popping out. So I've got my tattered lace teddy bear just for you. I've got some balloon framelits here that have these banners and then uh, texture. And I don't keep track of all my tech uh, embossing folders but that's where all that came from. The other thing is this double sided or different sided uh, cardstock is great because other than uh, that all I've got here is white cardstock so really cool. Anyway let's go ahead and do that reveal so I've got my balloons coming up I've got my happy birthday now banner and that display is just really pretty. The other thing I didn't mention I increased my uh, pop-up pa pop panel to four inches and so the slit in the top is four and a half quarter on each side and again that doesn't have to be so persnickety you just want to give yourself room for that to move up and down in the card then on the back because I had those longer cut lines or you know mistaken cut lines I just added a couple more banners just to cover that up a little bit 
So that's how that turned out. And again, I went ahead and prepped an envelope, just adding the same texture that was on my card front. So that's ready to go. Now these have all been landscape, and I did want to try a couple um, tall cards. And so I used a 12 inch piece of cardstock for this one, and so the most I was able to get out of it was, it's a five and a quarter inch tall, and I think it's four and a quarter? Yeah, I made it four and a quarter inches wide. And so this is the way this one's going to go, and it comes like this. And again, I cut a frame. This time I narrowed the frame to three quarter inches, and I narrowed the bottom fold under to three quarter inches. And so with a 12 inch piece of cardstock, I was able to get a five and a quarter inch tall card. Now these papers are an old Stampin' Up! paper. It's, uh, I think, Pretty Posies is what it was called. And my flower dies come actually out of China via eBay and then some stamping and dazzles. So that's really pretty. Okay, I wanted to back up a little bit for this next discussion. Um, if you just want to make cards in the dimensions and using the measurements that I give you, then you don't need to be paying attention. But if you create your own sizes and your own structures, you know, depending upon how you want and what you've got popping up and what you want to put on it, then pay attention because notice that this is getting really high. And it's getting really high because this is proportional to the cut line. Remember in those first two examples, that cut line on the sides was only an inch and a half. Now, I still left it two inches from the bottom of the card, but in a tall card, that means this cut line is going to be longer. If the cut line is longer, that means this is going to raise up. And so either you do more with this section in here, I'm going to leave it alone, but you're going to lose an awful lot of your pop-up. Let's talk about this a little bit because little changes in this make a big difference. And this one is actually also five and a quarter high. I just narrowed it to four inches. So if I were to bring it up to two and a half inches, this is how much lower it's going to go. So just that half inch is going to go like that. Now if I were to bring it up to three inches, I've got a problem. Because now I would have something like this and it is not going to lay flat. So if you're trying a new proportion and new dimensions, um, you might want to do it on a piece of a scrap paper first. Anyway, last card I want to show you is because those are kind of stocky looking. They're really not tall enough to be tall and they're not uh, square. So I wanted to make a six and a half by five inch card. Obviously that need, means you're going to need a, a pretty long piece of cardstock or piece together a piece of cardstock. This is the how, how I put this together. Again, I'm separating from the score line because I don't like the, getting boogered up. Notice also that I'm adding a little more dimension on each of my cards. These are raised up on foam squares because it really doesn't uh, make that much difference. It still folds pretty flat. The other thing I've done is I added a notch in my slit. So the slit is still wide enough for this card to pop up, but it kind of suggests to whoever gets it, that they might want to try and pull it. Now if they're holding it and pulling it, they're not going to get anywhere, but maybe if they mess around with it a little bit, it'll go something like that. Anyway, I'm not going to give you the dimensions on this because I'm actually going to post this as a challenge on the Paper Wishes message board, and if you get a chance, you might want to see some of what other people create using this design. Of course, also, I've got the envelope. Now when you've got a pull like this, you might want to give yourself uh, another quarter inch on the width of your envelope because that's going to take up space. It's going to be a tight fit for me because I forgot to do that. Probably fold it under as I put that in there. Anyway, I sure hope you give this structure a try. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, mail's flat, great, and great reveal, great display. And I hope you took something with you you can use in your own card making. Thank you for watching.